back legs are finished. Over here, front legs are finished. They just need a little bit of uh, sanding and rounding over the sharp edges. Right here, I have all the front and back rails. And over here, these are the side rails. And here's my setup for adding these. Actually, that's not a complete one. <clears throat> here's the tenons for the mortise and tenon joints. It's a pretty simple setup. I'm using a jig that I made for a previous project actually to put notches in the corners of legs but it works as a good table saw sled too and so I have my data stack in a stop block and then I just run everything through I'm finding that I I designed it so the shoulder would be the same on all four sides and that it should fit in here <clears throat> and this one does fit See if I can do one handed. But I'm finding that as I narrow, if as I make the length of the tenon narrower, it also makes the thickness of the tenon uh, narrower, and so what I'm going to have to do is do all this in two passes to make the thickness of the tenon first and then I'll have to readjust my dado stack to get this length of the tenon just right as well so just a little bit of um, miscalculation I don't know I mean there's there could be a lot of things but it's not that much extra work uh, I just have to and then I'll have to finesse each one of these anyway when I put them together Now making the face cuts as I'm doing with the dado stack is probably not ideal. Um, ideal ideally you'd use a tenoning jig and you'd make the two cheek cuts with the piece of stock vertical like this um, because when you do it like this you risk blowing out the... Um, here, here's a good example. It's, it's This isn't anything terrible but take a look at this um, you you get this chip out on the back side um, when you do it this way but um, since these are going to be up like this and there's going to be a seat on top of them I'm not too worried about it and I haven't had any real terrible chip out yet so I may reconsider if I get start getting some real terrible chip out but right now for the sake of consistency this is working out really well for me Well, after a whole lot of work, what I've produced is a bunch of parts. And um, what you see here are the frames of each of the chairs and the beginnings of the seats here. I'm starting to do glue-ups for the seats. And they're all stacked up here on my outfeed table. If I come over here, you can see here is a mock-up of one of the chairs. I just got it put together with clamps right now. 
a well, client's going to come over and she's going to approve or make adjustments to the design before I start gluing things up. There really isn't a whole lot to, um, to explain about how I cut out the rest of the parts. It's pretty much a repeat of what I've already showed you, and so I just spared you the boredom of watching me joint, plane, cut, and mortise. So here it all is, and uh, I'll jump back on here when I get around to doing the glue-ups or something else that's interesting. Everything has been cut out. I got pieces here, I have pieces here, pieces over here. I'm still working on making the panels here for the seat, and I still have to figure out how I'm going to make the back pieces, the decorative back pieces. But in the meantime, there has been a request for a change. So the tops of the chairs originally were rounded, like this. I haven't done this one yet. And now, the customer would like me to make them polygonal. I don't know exactly what you would call that, but that's what she would like. So. What I ended up doing was I made a pattern with the new shape on it, and if you can see I had, um, so what I have there is those reference marks for the mortise, and then I just line this piece up to those reference marks, and then I can trace out the pattern on the end there, and then I just line it up with the laser on the old chop saw over there. And it seems to work out. Everything even comes out pretty even, and it should be good enough. I've done four of these legs. i got six more to do, and then I'll be ready to move on to the next step. Here are the beginnings of my seat blanks. Um, the seat is going to be a three quarters of an inch thick. And right now I've just got pairs glued together. And then I'm going to glue three of these pairs together to make one seat blank. So if my math is correct, I should have 30 of these. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 30. So I have 30 of them to make five seats. And then I went ahead and I chamfered all the edges on all of the finished pieces. Um, since the customer didn't like the idea of round anything rounded on these chairs, um, I went ahead and opted for a chamfer instead of a round over bit. And I thought it would look good on the ends here that I made where I clipped the corners. And it still gives the uh, the chair legs a good feel. It doesn't dig into the hand or anything. Um, and it also kind of matches the whole theme of these uh, of this design. Okay, folks, I've made a lot of progress since the last time I checked in, so I figured I'd give you an update. So these are the completed seat blanks. Um, they are six boards that have been glued together and um, to make a panel. This side is uglier than the other side but regardless it's all going to get sanded and all that glue will go away. And <clears throat> So then what I did is I made a pattern out of MDF um, like I like to do and um, I used this pattern to mark out the lines, I'm not sure if I could get it in close enough to show you, but it's just a pencil line, you know, I, all the way around. 
and then I rough it out over there on the bandsaw to within uh, less than a sixteenth of an inch and then I, I uh, use my handy dandy brad nailer nail the pattern back to the rough cut out shape and, and then I finish it off here with the pattern routing bit on my router table I would love to be able to use this bearing the top bearing but my my router doesn't go down deep enough for me to be able to use that so I have to use the bottom bearing and that leaves a whole bunch of exposed space and it's just dangerous so you gotta be super careful when you're doing that and then here's the finished product here um, it's just nice and repeatable you know everything is a exact copy of the, of the uh, pattern and um, you know the rounded edges come out really nice if I can get the camera to focus there we go um, I think it's gonna get a chamfer around the perimeter and then um, I'll show you later how I'm going to attach it but I'm just gonna use uh, clips to attach it to the seat I'm not going to attach it permanently It'll give the wood room to expand and contract with the uh, swings and humidity that we have here in the St. Louis area. So as you can see, I have been busy. Um, these types of projects, when I have to make them for customers, sometimes the time constraint gets to be so that I just don't have the time to film every step. If I do find a considerable amount of interest in this project, I think I will make a set of plans available um, with a step-by-step -step video series because these are very satisfying to make um, and they look beautiful. What you're seeing here is the final glue up for the arms on uh, the, one of the chairs. Uh, I had to put arms on two out of the five chairs that I made. And so the arms haven't been stained yet. The rest of the chair has. As you can see here on the inside, I used dowels to put the arms on. So what I started out with was um, I put this vertical piece here on and I made sure I had it all square to the world. And then once that glue had dried um, then I used two dowels here and two dowels here uh, to attach the arm. I didn't have uh, anything, I didn't have a doweling kit, so what I ended up doing was making my own little guide. Pretty simple. And I also, if I can find them, made little... Um, locators, pin locators. So they've got a, a nail in the end of them that I clipped off to make a sharp point. And for a while they were working with friction and I was able to um, just push the the end of the nail into the piece that I needed, you know, where I needed to mark, to, where I needed to drill for the dowels. But after a while they started sliding the holes and so then I was just using this uh, paint marker here and putting some paint on the end and then just touching it onto the piece and it did a good job of marking it. A little nerve wracking. It actually had turned out a lot better than anticipated. Um, let me take you to a finished one over here where the glue's already dried. And you can see I've got a little bit of wood filler just in some spots. Actually it's the nail holes where I nailed it to the pattern to cut the arm out. All of which I don't think I got any video of but it's kind of the same as when I did the pattern work for everything else. So here it is, a nice tight joint here up against the arm, or I'm sorry, up against the back leg. And you don't see any, um, you know, any of the fasteners here. And you know, it's nice and strong. You can pick the chair up by the arms and everything. I wouldn't, I wouldn't worry about um, anybody putting weight on it. I've got just the seat pattern in here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and take you, diet, you guys downstairs and show you what a finished chair looks like. Alright, welcome to the basement. So here are three finished chairs and these are the ones without the arms. The third one's back there in the background. Um, 
So the seats are attached and this is the finished product right here. Uh, the way I attach the seats is with wooden clips that interface with the groove that I uh, cut into the rails of the chair. Um, so the idea behind that is that those clips will allow the seat bottom to expand and contract with temperature and moisture and um, without causing any cracking or anything in the panel. So we'll see. Um, the finish turned out awesome. I used a wipe on poly. I kind of made it myself. You can kind of see. Uh, there's there's some curl in the wood, you know, which came out pretty well in the finish. So in this jar here, I filled this jar up halfway with regular Minwax satin polyurethane, and then I filled it the rest of the way with mineral spirits, and I made my own wiping varnish or wiping polyurethane with that. And I would just wipe on a really thin coat on all surfaces, wait two hours, wipe on a second coat, and then let it dry overnight. Really, really lightly sand it. I've got a sanding sponge here. So I used a 320 sanding sponge, very lightly sanded it, and then repeated the process. I did about five coats. And uh, this is what it turned out looking like. It's got a very nice feel. I also, I've got this craft paper laying on the ground. I've been tearing off pieces of it, rubbing it down just to get, I mean, this feels just glass smooth now. It's very nice, especially the seat. The seat is kind of what everybody's going to see. The seat in the back, you know, is what everybody's going to see. So you want those to look their best. What else? Here's the remaining two seat bottoms for those two chairs that you saw in the garage there. So once I'm done, I gotta finish those chairs and then these seats will go on. So I'm almost there. So it's been a long journey getting these chairs done. It's actually taken me um, a little over two months to get them complete that's just working nights and weekends and whenever I had free time to work on them. Customer has been very understanding as far as my time constraints and I really hope they enjoy the final product. If you all are interested in these chairs and maybe learning a little bit more about how they are made, uh, go ahead and leave a comment below. Um, I'm gonna try to kind of gauge the interest in making a full-fledged set of plans and video series for this that I could make available for purchase. Just wanted to thank you guys for all your support and uh, if you like what you see go ahead and give it a like and leave a comment below. Once again my name is Tom, this is Red Barn Woodworking. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.